it is time. We're going to go way back uh, to 1969, and uh, I brought this song along because I'm a huge fan of Billy Preston. Uh, you like some Billy Preston there? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's one of the originals. Uh, the uh, The Beatles uh, met him on tour when they toured with Little Richard in 1962, he formed a friendship. Uh, he was playing keyboards on this track, which we're going to listen to. It's called Don't Let Me Down. Preston was one of the few outside musicians, excluding members of the orchestras that the Beatles brought into the studio uh, to play on this Beatles song. Um, George Harrison brought him in actually to smooth tensions because they were having problems at this time, which actually led to them breaking up. Uh, but it ended up re-energizing them in the studio. Um, and his presence in the studio made a huge difference. And so I uh, just wanted, brought this one along for their impromptu rooftop concert they did in 1969. And this is Don't Let Me Down by the Beatles. Let's go ahead and check it out. That guitar looks so big. Those muttons. Don't let me Those muttons. Down. I'm in love for the first time. Don't you know it's gonna last? It's a love that lasts forever. It's a love. What do you think, Mike? I'm just paying attention to the equipment, you know, like the micro, the microphones right. and like the way that they probably don't really have monitors and it seemed like a windy day outside yeah. and I'm wondering like how they're able to like hear themselves and make sure. That's why they're all like staring at the drummer pretty much. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, they're they, probably yeah. watching his hands to like see cut, he's playing the hi-hat. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. They're like, I have no idea what's going on. You know, we're literally <laughs> just gonna pray to God that the drummer is like keeping it uh, uh, us in sync. Well, the thing that's really crazy. That on a t-shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always says some of the funniest. So. Um, the thing that's really cool is this is a brand new song. They just wrote this song. I was right? gonna say this was like an iconic performance of theirs too. Yeah, right? and this is the recording of it, right? So this is live, and this is why they were so good. You yeah. know. Such great musicians, and again, Billy Preston's killing it on those freaking keyboards, man. He is holding it together. Mm -hmm. and, and what I really like when I watch this video is to watch them, they're having fun. Now, they didn't even really want to do this on the rooftop, um, George Harrison especially. <laughs> uh, but they went out there and did it, and they had a great time. You can see kind of like they're like, okay, it's finally coming to a, a close, this thing. <laughs> And we're having fun. And if you watch like the interactions and the and the and the eye contact between like John and Paul and everybody, it's it's you can tell like they're like, oh, this is this is what we love about being this in it, this right. thing called the Beatles, you know. Um, and this is this is this is what makes it so good. I also really like the timing in the song. It's got like a four four time in the verse, chorus, and bridge, and they go into that cool like five four in the pickup to the verse, mm -hmm. um, which is just a really cool thing. One more note, and it's coming up. And I always found it endearing because um, when I play on stage and singing, sometimes I'll forget my own lyrics. And John forgets his own lyrics here in just a second. And I love that they kept it in there. So <laughs> shake it out. Here we go. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. And from the first time that you really 
You're right, he's killing it. Feels that bass line. Yeah. Sick. Buttery. Oh, this is the, uh, the other version where he does remember his lyrics. Uh-oh. That's not the, uh, that's not the right one, but that's cool. <laughs> uh, if, if you ever get to check that out, just check out that version. And yeah. it sounded really good, too. I mean, I bet oh, it's yeah. been like remastered like 30 times, but still, it sounds really, really good. It's strong. I mean, mm-hmm. Their harmonies sitting up there on on the rooftop. I mean, I, I, they were just a great band. Yeah. Talented musicians. Yeah. Um, Ulrich, are you, were you a big Beatles fan growing up? No. No, I was not. I mean, the Beatles Me neither. was not. The Beatles wasn't really... Uh, not that like it was purposely not played in my house, but like I, it just wasn't wasn't a staple. You right. Know? Um, Same here. Every, everyone was like, <laughs> it was only till like later on. It's like you know, growing up, you're like, oh, you know, the Beatles. Who are you? Like, oh, what right. Are you? They right. literally invented music. Oh, I, I got a lot of that too. Tea and crumpets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, I you know. I, I didn't really appreciate them or didn't get the time to appreciate them until later. Um, just, I think people forget the amount of time that they, you know, were around as an actual band. Mm-hmm. And and I watched the first part of the documentary. I didn't finish it. Um, but man, I can't, I'll, I'll be honest, if I wasn't feeling like, you know, like I was in the seat, you know, as far as like the band dynamic. It was oh, cool yeah. to see that like they're just a band right yeah. <laughs> just human yeah. Like, yeah they're a band and like you know sometimes they're cool sometimes they're not you know right. sometimes they listen to each other sometimes they don't Ringo seems to be pretty chill all the time you know like <laughs> all, all the time. <laughs> but um that performance is really cool it's really powerful um and with some of the context that you're providing ej it's like um all that helps to paint the picture of like what their uh, you know legacy was and mm-hmm. you know a, what a, a melody and lyrics can do and just how it can resonate yeah. yeah much much love for what they do and i mean the legacy i mean look michael jackson bought their shit you know oh, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, everyone's trying to get their stuff for, you know they understand what it is right yeah yeah and i feel like also the way that they made so many different sounding albums in such a short amount of time especially with the constraints of like the time era that yeah. they were in mm-hmm. because there had to have cost like so much money just to go the into the studio yeah. exactly in the yeah. way that they played around with like different novel ways to manipulate sound on someone else's dime that believed in them was just really fascinating because it was like in order to get into the studio back then like you literally had to like take out a loan you know, like you, you had, had to you have advance for an somebody. investor. It wasn't just like, I'm going to roll in and pay 75 bucks an hour. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. Yeah, at first it was like that for them. And then they formed their own company, which they had their own studio and everything too. Yes. Um, and would be uh, producing their things. And that's kind of one of the things that also led to uh, some of the uh, hardships within the band was the business side of things. Right, right. right. Um, which it oftentimes got, does. Yeah, you know? which oftentimes does. And, uh, and uh, but you know I mean as far as uh, you know they came up with so many different things that people use even today with uh, recording techniques you know backward exactly. ta- backward taping yep. uh, um, you know they even like on one of their songs tomorrow never knows I think is the name of it um, like John was using like a Leslie speaker to do the vocals through it and they experimented heavily in the studio one because they never 
uh, they kind of stopped touring because they didn't really like touring. And they just focused on writing and creating and writing, creating. That's all they did was hang out in the studio. Yeah. Um, and in big giant chunks and uh, just experimenting, of course, with the producer, George Martin, who was a master um, at, at what he was doing and just um, Absolutely. just came in and just tried the, the craziest stuff to see what fit, see what worked and to see what would create new sounds. Um, and if you really do look at their whole catalog from when they first started in the early 60s to where they ended up, you know, in those seven years that they were together, I think it was seven years, um, they changed crazily, like, uh, and they just did every type of... Um, it's like David Bowie. Yeah. They made, I mean, like, entire, like, personas, yeah. you know, and they uh, had arrows. different outfits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they no. just yeah. went in every direction they could possibly think of going at the time. And uh, that's what that's what they gave us. Thanks yes. for that, EJ. You're welcome. Taking us to school. Preacher. You're welcome. Hi, this is Mike with Galaxy Jams Reacts. We hope that you enjoyed that React video. Be sure to check out the links below of when we're going to be live streaming our next show and also how to watch full episodes. Please hit that subscribe button. Every single one helps.